Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today we are talking about mods. We are modding a snare drum in a way that I often do with drums. After I've played them a little while, a um, couple of things that I oftentimes change out. We talk a lot about tuning, we've talked a lot about hoops also, um, with regards to how they change the functionality of your drum. We've talked about wires a fair bit too. We're gonna go a step further today and actually start taking some stuff off of the drum, specifically the strainer and the butt plate for the snare mechanism. The impetus behind this is that there are a lot of kind of physical factors that can change the behavior of the wires on your drum that are specific to this mechanism. And sometimes adjusting it helps and sometimes swapping out parts because of an issue with that particular drum or that mechanism can actually really affect the playability, the sound, and really importantly, the feel of the drum when you're hitting it. Thanks so much to Independent Drum Labs for sponsoring this video and providing the equipment that we used to demo these products for you. If you've never heard of them, they are a drum maker and they also are one of the very few who also design, engineer, the whole gamut, the hardware that they use on their drums rather than ordering things from overseas or basically copying parts from other companies. It's very unusual to see that right now and it really sets their drums apart as well as the fact that you can buy these parts, lugs, tom mounts, snare mechanisms, all of this stuff. If you're frustrated with one of these aspects of one of your drums and you don't feel like starting over with a whole new drum, this is a really great option for finding out what you can upgrade. Check out their website, link below. There's a lot of options there and you can really elevate the behavior of your kit with some of these add-ons. Now, this is one of my personal drums. Uh, it's been on the show before. Uh, it was in the calf video for sure, the, the early, early one. And what it is, is a anniversary, I think, reissue or, or issue of a chrome over brass sort of superphonic style drum from the early 2000s. Right away, I loved the sound of this drum. Um, I did change out the hoops a little way in because it had some kind of thin triple flange on and I wanted to try die cast and some other things. But it had a couple of things about it that bugged me right out of the gate. And one of them was an easy fix, and the other one we're actually finally fixing today um, because of something special that we have here that I'm super excited about. So I'll start off with the thing that I fixed, which is the actual mechanism itself. The mechanism that came on the drums is a modern interpretation of like a 70s strainer, which you can see here. And it looks perfectly functional. It is technically functional, but some of these mechanisms have issues with getting stuck when you're trying to operate them. And overall, it's just like not quite as well made as the ones from the 60s and some that they're making today. So what I did back when I lived in Seattle is I went to Don Bennett's drum shop where they had tons of parts and I got an original 60s P83 to put on there because the drill pattern is exactly the same. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with this type, um, you have to tie the strings onto it because it's left over from days where either you were doing that or maybe you were using gut strands that were wrapped through it. But either way, super functional mechanism, super good. I went further and modded this mechanism with a spring from like a ballpoint pen that I uh, threaded onto the screw that tensions up the wires so that it wouldn't slowly loosen over really heavy handed playing, which is the one issue with the old P83s that can show up, unless it's rusty, <laughs> but you know, you don't want that either. So that's been on there pretty much within maybe three months of me owning this drum. I did that to it and it's been on there ever since. Now issue number two is a little bit more structural to this particular drum and also the butt plate that's on this drum. The actual the actual plate itself, where it's installed, is problematically close to the snare side head. If it were narrower, if it were thinner, um, it wouldn't be so much of a problem, but the actual piece itself is quite wide. And so what ends up happening is that fairly soon after you've had the snare head on there and tensioned it up, it starts to get close to it. and at a point where the snare side head is still totally usable and working great, the rim and the head are actually running into the butt plate. That's not great for a variety of reasons, not just that it's limiting how much tension you can put on that part of the head, but also you're actually having like a vibrational interaction there that can buzz. 
Um, and if I tension it too far, I could actually be putting pressure on the shell by pressing on the butt plate, um, all of which is not great. And so it has limited the tension that I can put on the snare side head on this, which is also a little bit frustrating because I was using it as a calf head drum and with calf, uh, I tend to have a very tight snare side head because of the behavior of those batters. Now what we're gonna do today, um, and huge thanks to our friends at Independent Drum Labs for making this happen, uh, is we're going to actually upgrade everything on this drum as far as the strainer system goes. They they have come up with a butt plate that is pretty much infinitely adjustable in terms of the screw pattern that your drum has. And similarly on the other side, they have what amounts to a beautifully upgraded P83 style mechanism that has a little bit of a click in the knobs so that you don't have that issue of it slowly loosening when you're really bashing into the drum. This is kind of the business end of the mechanism here, um, as you can see, up and down like that, really solid piece. And on the back side, you have all of this play so that you can make it line up with anywhere from super duper close screw spacings all the way out to over a couple of inches, which is what we're dealing with on the Ludwig here. This is fabulous whether you're building your own drum and the shell has been pre-drilled for a certain kind of mechanism or if you're trying to swap this out on any number of drums that already have holes and you don't wanna go put an extra holes into that drum. So we're gonna do kind of a high speed preview of the installation process. It's really not as scary as it might seem to do things like this um, to a drum, you know, just make sure you keep all your parts. Pro tip, if you're doing this, um, do it on a snare stand and leave your rezzo head on so that if any of the screws or parts come off as you're unscrewing them, they just land on the head and you don't end up chasing them around on the floor. All right, so the modification is complete. We've put on the butt plate, we've put on the snare mechanism on this side, and everything is lining up perfectly, looks nice. A couple of important things to mention about uh, the mechanism side, for sure, is that one of the things that you need out of a universal mechanism, if you're gonna be putting it on any old drum, is to make sure that it's going to not just fit the screw spacing, which this almost certainly will um, if you have any drum with a normal mechanism on it that I've seen anyway. But also, this drum has a center bead, which a lot of metal drums have, and not all snare mechanisms can accommodate because it has to kind of arch over that, which this one is designed to do um, in addition to the adjustable spacing of the screws and all that. If you listen closely, It has a built-in system for alleviating that problem that a lot of mechanisms have of slowly loosening as you're playing really hard for a while. It has a little sort of click to it. It's very subtle, but it's enough to keep the wires at a given tension, really no matter how hard you're hitting it, which is the one thing that has always been a little bit frustrating um, with the older like P83 style mechanisms. If they don't have something like that, then when you really start getting into the drum and really smashing it, uh, by the end of the song, you notice your wires are kind of backed away and things don't sound as good as they did when you started. It's worth saying that that's something that we have experienced here in the midst of filming episodes. I experienced it today um, before we changed this out actually. So now all there really is left to do is to put the head and the wires back on and go ahead and play. All right, we're back in business. We got the head back on, we got the hoop back on, we got the wires back on. And right out of the gate, I'm super happy. Basically because it's got smooth action, um, it's got the click and the turn, which is super nice. My bottom head isn't running into the butt plate now, which is just giving me peace of mind. Also, it's gonna mean I can get a few more months probably out of this rezzo. And also a couple of 
specific functionality things with regards to the P83 is that we're not tying on the string anymore. Um, and I always use strings, so this didn't really occur to me that much, but if you want to use straps, you actually can't with the P83. You might be able to do like strings on that side and a strap on the other side, but you know, we also use Custom Pros around here a lot, and they have that really clever system with the cotter pin and the straps and everything, um, and that's basically just a no-go um, on the P83. So this opens up possibilities for the way that wires behave differently with straps if you want to get into that. There's no slippage because we're not relying on a knot that I tied, um, which is, can also be an issue with that kind of mechanism. And most importantly, it sounds good. You know, the break angle of the strings to the head is basically the same as a Ludwig one, um, which can be funny with some mechanisms. It'll make them come away from the head in unusual manners or be a little bit choky. And this is just an elegant, sturdy design. Um, I feel like it builds upon the P83 and they fixed like the couple of things that always drove me crazy about that. And because it's got the adjustable screw spacing, you can put this on a drum that had a trick throw on it. You can put it on one that's got a Ludwig or a Pearl or really anything in between. It's kind of like a tool for your tool. Like it's one more thing to not have to worry about. Um, and oh boy. Also, <laughs> I kind of hate ones that come straight out of the drum because I like to have this next to my leg for accessibility and also ones that spin laterally like this. Similarly, kind of unwieldy if you have a tight setup. So this being just a straight up and down, you really can't beat it. It's also worth mentioning that these come in different finishes, so if you're rocking like black hardware, gold hardware, there are options for you too. Also new to me is the idea of a butt plate that requires vertical mounting holes rather than horizontal. I've never seen that, but they offer that as an option if that's the sort of piece that you need. That about wraps it up. Um, thanks so much to Independent Drum Labs for hooking this up and sponsoring this episode um, and giving us an opportunity to explore this mechanism, which I'm definitely keeping on this drum um, for sure because I, I frankly <laughs> have all the problems solved that I was frustrated with, and it's fantastic. Um, we really appreciate that. And... I hope that you explore this kind of modification for your snare if you're annoyed with your mechanism. I've run into weird behaviors and snare mechanisms from every brand that I've ever owned, whether it was the design or just a faulty piece. It's a relatively inexpensive modification. Check out their website below. Um, there's a link beneath the video. Um, yeah, check them out. It, it might actually be exactly what you're looking for. Also, as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe, and click the notification bell below so you hear about our new videos. Thanks again to our patrons on the Patreon for helping us make this season possible. We have new secret series coming out that'll be on the Patreon only, so please go follow the link to that. Check that out. And lastly, I want to hear your snare mechanism stories, um, or strainer. <laughs> Some people are pretty intense about calling it the strainer. If you've ever had issues, or if you have a favorite one, or if this is something that you've never modded, or that you mod every time, um, let us know. We were really surprised with the results we got today, um, even more so than expected. So yeah, let us know, check it out, and we'll see you soon.